First of all, I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is first in my life. And due to the, the time, um, I will get through this during my time. I understand I got six or seven minutes. Well, my name is Kerry Wilson Bigelow, known to some as Reverend Bigelow. I'm an ordained minister, and I attend at Shaw University. I have been married for 23 years and have three daughters who are sitting out in the audience right now. I worked for the city of Burlington for 18 years, transferred to the town of Chapel Hill, hoping for a better workplace. But at this moment, I feel like I, will, I was transferred from a poor plantation to a rich plantation. My brother Clyde and I have been persecuted daily and also other workers who will not come forward. Clyde and I have been working in unsafe conditions. Our supervisors are biased and well as racist. So now we think of them as being our slave masters. Clyde, who is a longtime native of Chapel Hill, and I got fed up with master. And so we started writing grievance from February 12, 2010 to September 17, 2010. Stan Noah Wood, a longtime trans bus driver of 23 years, was suspended without pay for three days after he and others submitted petitions to management regarding danger of shift without breaks. Master also got fed up with us and retaliated on September the 20th. Me and Clyde on Monday, we come to work, planning on doing what we usually do, and the director called us in to help us back and told us that uh, we was being put on an administrative leave. My brother Clyde, when he come out, he looked like that uh, someone had told him he was going to be hanged. He was shocked because the only thing we've been doing for the last six months is doing our job and trying to establish UE 150. Clyde and I was put on administration leave pending investigation of serious incident. Now I want you to listen closely to this. When Clyde and I got fed up with management, we started filing grievance. And when management also got fed up with us, they started writing checks to Kepler Association Industrial. They went on the outside and hired an independent agency to investigate us. They paid CIA hourly rate of $200. The message we got from the great Pharaoh was, you people may have dignity, but we, the management, have the taxpayer money from the town of Chapel Hill. And we will continually use modern day tactics from 1712 by slave owner Willie Lynch was written concerning how to keep their slave public workers divided. We will pay terrorists and outsiders to keep the plantation in order. Okay, now you have heard my testimony. Now it is time for a brief sermon. My subject is, Christians continue to be persecuted. 2,000 years plus years ago, the Lord placed his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, among his peoples. The Lord sent his son to inform people that life doesn't end when death comes, but eternity begins. Jesus loved his heavenly father. Amen. He would tell his disciples often that his father had the whole world in his hand. Jesus was reared up by his stepdad, who was a carpenter by trade, right. who was a common man, what we would call. When Jesus became 30 years of age, he began his ministry, teaching, preaching, and performing many miracles. Right. He taught the peoples that the words that he had spake was not his own words, but the father who had sent him. The people who sat in high places, the rulers of the synagogue, peoples in management, management hated Jesus because Jesus was teaching them that management was not the one to be worshipped. 
Jesus warned his followers, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So they hired a union buster. The union buster were your experts. They knew how to bring charges on an innocent man. The union buster theme was this. Charge the person first and then build a case. They arrested Jesus first and put him in a, through a kangaroo court. Finally, they charged him for blasphemy, which means he was guilty unto death. But the head man charged was, but the head man in charge was not comfortable with this decision. But the union buster persuaded the people to kill Jesus. During that time, if you were a common man charged with being guilty of death, you would be nailed to a cross. But if you were in management, you would get your head cut off. By Jesus being a common man, he was sentenced to the cross. The enemy set out to kill him, but they were only doing the will of God. Little did they know he came to die so we could live. They thought they were taking his life, but he was laying it down. They nailed him to a tree and put him in a borrowed grave. But on the third day morning, I heard the songwriter say, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. He got up, and he said, Whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. 2,000 years later, we are still preaching about the cross. The purpose was to silence Jesus, but they were actually lifting him up. But they were, but so you better be careful when you accuse innocent, godly men of false intentions. Let's make it right. Get on the right side of history. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bigelow.